5 in the series microwave and millimeter wave circuit design myself and Ragnigam and uh, in this series uh, I'm going to do some electromagnetic simulations and then I'm going to use all the theory which I have developed till now to design some passives okay so now let's get started what I wanted to show you first and foremost is that in ADS okay ADS we have two simulators one is method of moment based momentum so this is called momentum okay so momentum is a method of moment based simulator okay and this is a 2d simulator and the Z or Z direction okay Z direction is a mathematical uh, modeling Z direction is mathematical modeling okay okay so now because we have a, a mathematical modeling in Z direction we call it two and a half D simulator okay you still this is a uh, method of moment assumes that you know all the computation is going to take place in thin sheets so it's a two and a half till simulation uh, and uh, the computation is in thin sheets and then mathematically we we implement what is called thick thick metal okay so this is not a 3d simulator this is a two and a half d simulator right now and so all the drawing or 3d entry is going to be the top view so all all the the entry so it's a 2d entry tool it's a 2d entry okay so that means we we draw top view we draw top view in this case and the Z information is going to be flat in the sense that will be given by the Z information is in okay Z information is in substrate definition Okay, so Z, inform Z uh, information is in substrate definition. So what you see here is a substrate. Now in this substrate, uh, up to back via, right? So up to the back via, up to M1, right? So that is that is going to be. So so I have got IC sitting here, and up to metal one. So over here, I have metal one. Up to this metal one or M1. I have got the IC uh, stack up right so up to here I have IC stack up which means that I have got different layers for example I have got M2 here right so then then I have something called virtual metal actually there is nothing called virtual metal there is a uh, rather these two these two are stitched together and uh, that's constitutes one metal and then you have got metal one so in between I have got this cap mem cap so that's you see over here which is 0.15 micron thick right so that 0.15 micron thick that is going to be the capacitance over here right and then you can see the vias right from metal 2 to metal 1 we have got via 2 but if you want to leave uh, this layer not being connected then you can go metal 2 to virtual metal 1 and then between virtual metal 1 and metal 1 there is this capacitor right and then this thin film resistor layer is there here and uh, in the same same layer we have metal 1 massa ohmic and thin film resistor and then there is a back via okay going to the back plating in case of back plating I have removed the ideal ground replaced it with M1 right so this is going to be the board metal so I'm going to put here the the board okay so M1 and M0 is the layer which I have put in there it didn't it didn't come with the process right okay so so this is going to be the board metal right and the for the board I'm using Rogers RO 3003 right it has uh, 
dielectric constant relative dielectric constant of 3 and its loss tangent is 0 0.00083 so this is going to be 10 delta right so this will make sense okay after tell you after I tell you what is a dielectric loss but for now okay understand that there is some material okay dielectric material in between metal 1 and metal 0 metal 1 is copper metal 0 is copper and then I have introduced a VR 0 VR 0 right this is also copper so uh, my metal system for now is going to be metal 1 then we are 0 connecting metal 0 and in between I have R0 3003 and this is 10 mil so this is 10 mil high right and the thickness of the metal is going to be uh, what you call 1 ounce copper that means it is 1.34 mil right so this is my substrate which you see on the left hand side so I'm going to draw all the structures here now I have also introduced a layer called murata well it's a fictitious layer so when if, if I put a resistance I have put a layer which I am calling murata so it is 25 ohm per square right so this is the resist resistance sorry So this is resistance which I have put here. So now if you see in the material definition, if you click on this, this one. So this is I call thin film res resistance and the, the yeah and when I and I look at you know what that is. So let's go here. That's the one. So that's the layer name and what sorry cancel and what is the material uh, material is called Murata and if I look into what is the definition of that Murata Murata is the name of the layer and the material is called thin film dress so if I look at thin film dress uh, yeah so its resistance is 25 ohm per square that's that's I have inserted so all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines uh, like my micro strip lines coplanar lines or coplanar waveguide on metal 1 and metal 0 metal 0 will be the ground plane and metal 1 will be the signal line right so this is just for demonstration purpose but I'm going to use the same stack up for designing ICs okay and this is going to be a uh, gallium arsenide process layers so this is a two metal gallium arsenide process right so let's get started here the the, the height of gallium arsenide is uh, 2 mil or 50 micron so let's get started with this right okay so first of all I want to show you okay how to do the lines transmission lines so let's set this aside okay I'm going to do transmission lines okay so let's say I'm going to make a new folder and call this as passives correct and in this passives I'm going to create a new uh, schematic I'll call this as micro line so it's a micro strip line right okay now there are some empirical formulas which can be used to design a 50 ohm line of a certain length right but then there is something called line cal which is provided in ADS which you can use to design a 50 ohm micro strip line so what you do is you go here to tools line cal okay okay so this is your line cal tool so I'm using amblin which stands for microstrip line and I my epsilon r is 3 
right so this is the choice of your material and then height is 10 mil then the thickness of metal is going to be one one three four that is going to be one ounce copper right uh, 1.34 sorry mil conductivity is going to be in this case uh, this is copper right so 5.68 5.68 e raised to 7 10 delta is triple zero eight three eight three so this is the 10 delta right or lost engine and I'm going to design a line at uh, let's say 10 gigahertz right so I want to design a 50 ohm line so this tool allows you to do synthesis as well as analysis and I want to do a 90 degree line right and here is the width in mil if I want I can do this in microns okay and this in microns okay and so let's just do that and to do that I have to just say synthesize Okay, it sees it's, it's, it shows that the line is going to be 603 micron wide. Okay, so what does it mean 603 micron wide? It will be like 24 mil wide, right? And this is going to be 4857 micron, which will be it will be 4.8 millimeter long, right? Okay, so that would be a 90 degree line at 10 gigahertz on this substrate okay so that is there so let's check this so what I'm going to do here is sorry okay what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to uh, microstrip components so so I'll go to T line microstrip right and then I will place a substrate which will be the same substrate right so uh, this is going to be the height height is going to be 10 mil not micron so if I go here so the height is going to be 10 mil okay epsilon is 3 right conductivity is okay so okay uh, 5.68 10 raised to 7 5.68 E7 that's going to be the conductivity of copper and then this is the height of the box and the thickness of the metal is 1.34 mil 1.34 mil correct and 10 delta is triple zero point triple zero so 10 delta is zero point zero 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 eight three right and roughness we don't wa bother about anything okay don't worry about what metal it is going to draw and stuff like that just say okay so this is my substrate definition height is 10 mil epsilon is 3 okay then conductivity is that of a copper thickness is 1.34 mil then delta is this and this is the same what I have done in line cal you see line cap so if I have a line which is 603.6 okay so if I have a line so if I go to Amlin so that's my line okay so if I do a 603 micron line 603 right and then the length is going to be uh, 4857 4857 micron so this is going to be a quarter wave line so let's do a s parameter simulation simulation s parameter term 1 term 2 and then the line would be like this let's connect them together
okay so after you connect them together you just hit simulate right now you have to do s parameter simulation right and i'm going to look at 10 gigahertz of course you know if you remember uh, uh you see impedance right that is equal to how much root of l over c right so the width decides the l and the width and the height decides the c so i have w when i fix the dimension of uh, dimension width and width i have fixed both l and c ratio so i have fixed the impedance to be 50 ohm as per this line can tool right so let's say i want to simulate this at 10 gigahertz now it is independent of frequency because if this is a lossless line okay it is near to lossless then it is going to be the impedance is going to be frequency independent right so if i go to display i'll just display the frequency okay that's 10 gigahertz and i'm going to hit simulate so what i expect is s11 and s22 will be the center of this chart. so let me see if i'm recording meanwhile yes i am so it is done so let's look at s11 and s22 and they are the center of this chart. correct and it is independent of the length because the the 50 ohm has no phase right no matter what is the length it doesn't matter i can make this 8000 it still it should be the center of this chart. so if i make this as 8000 or let's say 6000 so the length doesn't matter okay it's just the electrical length is going to change but the impedance is not going to change because 50 ohm doesn't have a phase right no matter how much line i add i can make a, a 18000 micron long line which will be 1.8 millimeter uh, sorry 18 millimeter sorry okay and if i hit simulate this is still a 50 ohm line right because the there is no phase on the 50 ohm line so it is not going to take you around now if let's turn it back let's turn it back to what it was okay so it was this now let's hit simulate and let's look at the phase as to one okay so i design it to be a 90 degrees at 10 gigahertz so if i look at phase of s21 okay so this is 90 degrees right so sorry so phase is 90 degrees here right so i have designed a line using a line cal and this is a, a circuit model so this is still a circuit model this is not a layout right so the next thing i'm going to do is layout now as soon as i take this to layout now this this calculation is assuming that the ground plane is infinite right this is assuming ground plane is infinite but when i do a layout it is not going to be so so what i'm going to do is i am going to do a new layout and create a layout okay and here i am going to take the metal so in this case this will be m0 m m1 so m1 so i am going to create a line so before that let me adjust preferences uh, options preferences okay don't worry don't worry about that okay let's go to options preferences that is so horrible a screen a silk screen is missing okay so you know that's the problem with the ptk guys not mine okay so i'm going to have a snap of point zero one and you know what uh you should always design on the grid specification of the ic but you know of course i am doing on the board so i can do whatever i like right so okay once you change this if you want to 
uh, not change this again and again you should go and save a copy this goes under layout preference file so if it's layout prf so you just have to save this again so once it is saved you click ok cancel this so now the grid is much smaller right so you see here sorry so grid is much smaller right 0 0.01 micron right okay so i am going to insert this at 0, 0, 002 so let's say if i want to insert some point i can say insert so i am drawing on metal one and then i can say insert uh, coordinate entry right uh, insert coordinate entry and i can put here absolute zero zero say okay so zero zero is over here what happened to the origin that's not correct so i am going to say i want to draw this and say insert coordinate entry absolute zero and zero and say okay so it is over here and then the length so i'm going to say so i'm going to say insert coordinate entry again and this time i'm going to go to relative so the height is 603 and the length is 4800 and something let's see what this is 4857 4857 correct and hit ok so if i do a fit all which would be where did it go okay does f work yes it does so this is my line which is going to be 90 degrees and it is going to be uh, what you call uh, quarter wave length long now i have to put a ground plane now the here that unknown comes in okay so here you should also do this unable so unable these are all unable right so if you bring here it will snap here so this okay 4857 right so i will make this insert coordinate entry okay i'm going to do a quarter wave extension of the ground 4857 right and same thing over here right and i am going to say okay so that's your ground plane and i'm going to center the line on the ground plane so i'll take the ground plane hold it from the center so that's the center and bring it to its center so now this is the structure which i want to em simulate now i will put two ports to it so port number one port number two and so if you see these are very small ports but it's okay then i have got port 3 and I have got port 4 here on the other side I have sorry port 4 now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this port underneath that port right so first of all I'm going to change this to metal 0 the ground is on metal 0 right and then I will go here choose this port and move it okay so i'm going to move that port over here escape and this additional piece of uh, wire i'm going to delete so this is f port number four right which is a ground reference for two now here is port number three which should also be on metal zero so i'll put this on metal zero right and then i'll move it underneath the the, the port one so i will move that underneath port one this additional line which i'll say is deleted now i have done this i have my geometry and i have my port definitions here right now the next thing which i want to do is create em simulation uh, setup okay so once i do that it will come up with what kind of simulation am i trying to do okay so right now i'm going to do method of moment okay so this momentum microwave is what i'm going to use 
and substrate is defined over here right so this is my substrate ports okay uh, here i have to edit the ports so i'll open the port editor and this is very simple i am going to declare port 3 as a ground reference for port 1 and port 4 as a ground reference for port 2 so once i'm done with that i'm done and now i can open back my em simulation setup okay so you see here port 3 is a ref ground reference for port 1 and port 4 is a ground reference for port 2 right then i will put the frequency so let's say i want to do a single frequency and that single frequency is 10 gigahertz okay and then output okay before that i want to do options also go to options mesh and i'm going to allow edge mesh and edge mesh is because most of the current is going to be on the edge and transmission line mesh in case there is it is smaller than a wavelength then i'm not going to get cells inside the length so i can put how many cells i want per uh, per unit length also but i don't have to let it do it by itself right next is i want to show that i save the em model and uh, once i have done i'll save it then i will look at em preview okay so if you click em preview button it's going to open for you a 3d structure 3d structure of this microstrip line okay it's supposed to open it next time i'm going to be on a uh, higher machine so that it's faster so what you see here is a microstrip line right so what is a microstrip line it's just a piece of line sitting on top of a substrate and here i can shade the substrate for example here i have shaded this substrate and i can reduce its transparency so that no you know what substrate i'm going to talk about so i'm talking about this substrate on which this line is sitting and on the bottom side there is a ground plane strangely i don't get the thickness to the line so i'm going to check this because i am supposed to get okay because it is embedded in okay so let's remove that so now you see the thickness okay so now this is a microstrip line which i want to simulate this port one is with respect to port three now port three is removed here that is that's the convention so the convention is first you name all the signal ports and then you do all the ground reference ports and so that the port numbering is consistent port 1 and 2 are there but all the ground ports will not be shown in the simulation results only port 1 and 2 will be shown and their references 3 and 4 would be established here but they will be removed in my data set okay so the ground reference is port 3 for port 1 and the ground reference is port 4 for port 2 so everything looks fine to me here so once i have seen that i can hit simulate okay now the simulation has finished right so what do i have i am seeing that the the line impedance is 50 ohm but the length turns out to be 101 degrees 10 degrees more than what it should be right so if you were to look at the 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 data set over here so let's plot that data set here so if you plot a data set from the circuit simulation and you look at the phase of s21 okay so it was 90 degrees right and it turns out to be 101 degrees though the impedance is 50 ohm right right dot there so impedance has no issue it's just that the line length is wrong so in this case uh, what i can do is em uh, say clear momentum mesh and then i can select you know this so i will put the ports aside first 
so that's my ports so I'm going to put them aside first okay and then so this is uh, 90 degrees so basically just let's do a simple computation CALC okay so 4857 okay turns out to be 90 degrees so divided by 90 so this will be 1 degree right multiplied by so right now it is turning out to be 102 degrees so 4857 is down turning out to be 101 degree right so I'm going to divide by that so 48 degrees 48 uh, micron is a degree multiplied by 90 okay so it should be 4328 right and it is 4857 right now so I have to reduce by 528 roughly so I am going to go here select this and say add it move relative to minus uh, 528 28 okay so this should be a quarter wave line so I'll take these and this basically is my port so I'm going to hold port from here and snap it to the center here done so I am place the port back right and I'm going to do the simulation again so if I okay so I go here and I hit simulate again so okay so this is 90.1 and now EM is 90.7 okay and this is roughly smaller than 50 right so right now if I put a marker here and normalize it to 50 so it is 47.5 so two and a half ohm smaller right that means that the line is fat I have to make the line thinner right but I'm not sure you know what's going on right so what I'll do is instead of doing just that I'll go to EM simulation and this time I am going to go to simulation type to be FEM and hit simulate so let me put so now on the same on the same structure I have changed my simulation to FEM I want to show I want to be sure that before I alter the width of the line does the FEM give me the same result as 47 ohms 47.5 ohms which method of moment is given so I am going to do a FEM simulation to to establish the impedance of the line right so this is basically adaptive mashing so I see my FEM numbers are way bad isn't it so method, method of moment was telling me that I am 47 ohm okay and FEM is telling me I'm 34.63 ohms so whom should I believe I would believe on FEM so that means that I have to take the impedance of the line up right and so I have to make the line to be thinner than what it is so basically this is a big error when it comes to doing this so micro microstrip lines are not advisable right because in in the thickness of the metal right the thickness of the metal is deciding the fringing fields right now if the fringing fields are not going to be properly computed in method of moments because you know the the thickness is applied uh, mathematically 
it's a two and a half it's a two and a half d simulator right so i would rather be believe a 3d simulator not a two and a half d simulator so what i'm going to do is i adjust the the width of the line right and make it 50 ohm and then look at so the phase is still coming out to be 89 degrees right 89.5 degrees so there is no issue with the phase the issue is with the impedance of the line and microstrip imp uh, lines they are going to be notorious because because they really depend on the extension of the ground so what i'm going to do is i am going to do the the line let me see if i'm recording yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the line to be thinner so all i have to do is very simple which you will take long time in HFSS to do. But here it is going to be very easy, move relative. And I'm going to lower the width by let's say minus 50 micron. Okay, so minus 50 micron, done. And also the height by plus 50. Okay, so I have in all reduced the overall uh, width of the line to be 503. So if I go here, from here to here if I measure it is 503 micron so let's hit this simulate button again okay so I have shown you that you cannot rely on method of moments you have you should do a FEM right so after reducing it by 100 micron I'm still at 42 ohms and I have to go up to 50 ohms right so I will again reduce it by 100 okay so you see that you cannot rely on okay you have to decide what gives you more confidence does the 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 3d simulation gives you more confidence or a 2d simulation according to me 3d simulation should give you more confidence so again what I'm going to do here let me see if I'm recording yes Okay, so what I'm going to do here is further reduce it. So I will say add it, move, move relative, minus 50 again, minus 50. So the question is for the, the key side guys. What should I believe? Your momentum is showing me something else and your FEM is showing me something else. Okay. So after having done this, and I'm going to rely on FEM rather than momentum because it's a 3D simulation. So I'm going to hit simulate again. Okay, so I'm going to hit simulate again. Say yes. Okay, by the way, I want to show you the process. So in this process, what's going to happen is, uh, what it is doing is, first of all, it is mashing it. And then it is going to refine the mesh. Okay, so I'll show you what what I mean by refining the mesh okay see this so this is basically your error so it is adaptive mesh so it is basically mashing till it gets the residue down to a certain value which is 0 0.02 I have set in simulation right so if you go here and look at what it is doing is you will be seeing this so this is your this is your delta s I have set it to be less than uh, 0 0.02 if it is less than 0 0.02 the mesh is finalized so it is doing iteration right and you will see that the the size of the mesh is increasing so it is 0.2 GB here total and it is 0.427 GB here. So starting with 64,248 unknowns to 1,22,806 one, uh, 1, unknowns. Right, so it is still refining, you see. So this is 238, it's still not less than 0 0.02. So it will keep refining till it goes less than 0 0.02. Right, so this is your delta. Okay, so now you see the delta is 0 0.0148. So now it will start with the with the solid solution. And now, if you see the solution now, 
you are where you want it to be so now this is a 50 ohm line right so what formula told me was 600 and 603 micron what FEM shows me is 403 microns and what um, okay so and what the length was was 4857 but the length now is 4329 so that is a 90 degree line so I am going to depend on on FEM rather than MOM for my simulation so but still let's plot something so let's say visualization okay no visualization is available you know why that is not available is because you might have to do it once more uh, when you go here okay and in EM simulation when you go to uh, options say save fields for all generated frequencies all generated frequencies if you check on that then you you will have this so you will have to run this again okay so it is going to simulate again okay so now that the simulation has finished once more right let me see if I'm recording this yes I am okay so simulation has finished one more let's try to visualize now what it looks like right so if I go here and say visualization okay so this is my line okay by the way I just wanted to tell you these are called the extents so the way the extent is set I'm not happy with that because I all only want to put an aperture from here down to here at the ground plane but that's okay so let's say this is done okay so let's go to the solution setup there's only one frequency which is 10 gigahertz and I want to plot EH but I want to plot the current so let me see where do I plot the current this is field visualization right just one second okay so I have some difficulty in visualization uh, the visualization shows up but this is not what I'm expecting but anyways so what I have here is a line which is uh, a 90 degrees line right and it has a face uh, so it has a impedance of 50 ohm so I have seen a vast difference in the microstrip line impedance now let's try to implement some other lines right so I'm gonna close this okay and the procedure is going to be the same right so let's close all these iterations which I have done okay so let's close all the iterations right so line cal predicted a certain width the circuit simulator used that width and gave me 50 ohm while momentum gave me 47.5 ohm with the same dimensions while FEM gave me a 36 ohm for the same width and at 403 it showed me a 50 ohm so now the question comes is what to believe and according to me I'm going to believe the uh, FEM simulations okay now let's see what can I do with these lines right uh, microstrip lines I can make passives out of this right so let me discuss some passives which I can make okay so first thing people you know the passives which I'm going to deal with so first thing is you know power dividers and combiners so so these are you know bilateral circuits so if you do a divider and if you connect it in a reverse fashion it will be a power combiner so I am going to look into a power divider okay second thing I want to look into is going to be a, uh, a 90 degree hybrid design okay and third thing I might look into is going to be a 180 degree hybrid or a trace and then the final thing I'm going to look into is a Balen design 
okay so these are the designs i want to look into so now if i was to do a, a divider right so the divider goes this this way so this is going to be a two-way divider and in between I'm going to put a resistance of 100 ohm so here if I make this line to be lambda by 4 and this line is going to be root 2 times of 50 okay so the root 2 times of 50 is going to be 70.7 ohms so if I do that I can get a two-way divider provided I put a hundred ohm in between right so this is going to be a Wilkinson two-way divider right so let me see if I'm recording okay the next will be a three-way divider so in case of a three-way divider I am going to the, do the similar stuff okay but here I am having three ways okay so in three ways I uh, what I'll do is I will do a 50 ohm connection to a common terminal and this is the most problematic thing when you do the layouts right so here I am going to have uh, divide by 3 right so this line would be uh, square root of 3 times of 50 ohm right which will be around 86 ohm and it will be lambda by 4 long right so this will be a three-way divider now I can do a four-way divider and so on I can also so this would require more than two metals because you would have to jump right so you would have to jump here to to do a uh, one of the signal lines you have to jump to be able to connect all 50 ohms to the common node right so then there are certain topologies where you do not need to do this 50 ohm to a common node okay so we will explore that so we have a three-way divider here okay so you can go on and make an n-way divider there are other ways of making a divider is what is called a corporate feed in a corporate feed you always divide into two so it will be like a binary tree so if I want to divide it into four I'll put one more divider on this port and one more divider on this board so I will divide it into four right so the power is going to be divided by by 3 dB in a two-way divider okay by 4.77 dB in a three-way divider right and by 6 dB in a four-way divider right so this is the Wilkinson divider next thing I have is a hybrid okay 90 degree hybrid and it has a lot of applications right so this hybrid would be something of this nature okay so this line is again lambda by 4 but this is going to be 50 divided by root 2 and this is going to be 50 and this is going to be 50 so this is also lambda by 4 lines right so there are one two three ports and four ports so now you see that the power which goes into here has to travel 270 degrees to come here if it follows this path and 90 degrees to come here so so basically one of the phaser is in this direction 90 degrees the other one is in this direction 270 degrees and both will cancel out so port 4 is isolated to port 1 correct and then the power which goes out of 3 is going to be minus 3 dB and it is going to be 180 degrees out of phase and here the power which goes out of out of 2 is minus 3 dB and it will be minus 90 degrees so the, the overall uh, okay so the overall difference in the phase where is it go yeah the overall phase difference in the phase is going to be 90 degrees right so this will be called a 90 degree hybrid okay so if you want 
you will get a sine wave from one side and cosine wave from the other side and so these hybrids can be used in number of applications okay then there is going to be a 180 degree hybrid sorry so in a 180 degree hybrid let's go this way okay so you have got got this this is also called a red race so you have what 90 degrees here 90 here and 90 here so this is 90 this is 90 right and then this one is 3 lambda by 4 so this is lambda by 4 everything is lambda by 4 lambda by 4 and when you come out of this here it is this is going to be 3 lambda by 4 right so if you put power here it is going to go here and it's going to go here right so let's see what's going to happen so this is going to be 90 degree out of phase this is 90 and so basically this is lambda by 4 this is lambda by 4 plus 3 lambda by 4 so lambda by 4 plus 3 lambda by 4 sorry so this is going to be lambda so if I put power here it will go lambda here and these are all lambda by force right so I would have a okay so it is simple if you put power into this port then 3 dv power down would come out of these two ports right while this port will be isolated why because uh, if you see if I go this way it is going to travel lambda by 2 while it is going to travel entire lambda here so one of them is lambda by 2 the phasor is this way other is complete lambda the phasor is this way and they will cancel out each other so this port is isolated and the port and these ports are going to have half the power so they are going to be 3 dB down now in case of uh, if I put the power in this port then the power coming out of this port and that port so power coming out here and here are going to be 3 dB down but then this port would be isolated so this is how a 90 degree hybrid will work oh, sorry 180 degree hybrid will work okay so this is these are the some of the passes which you can do now do you have to do the layout of all of them to understand them well you can do it in circuit and then you can do it in layout right so what I'll do is in this session I will just do this in circuits okay so to do that uh, let's make a non 50 ohm line so let's say I want to implement a 70.7 ohm line so 70.7 ohm line right a 90 degree long so let's implement that so this is 319.8 width and 4991 as the length 319 is the width so this is 319 319.8 right and the length is 4991 4991 4991 right okay so now let's check this now the way to check this is if it is a 70 ohm line is put here 70 70.7 70.7 and put here also 70.7 70.7 .7. 70 right so if you do that and hit simulate both should be at the center of the smith chart and say no okay so okay uh, do one thing uh, let's do this simulation again and say yes 
okay and let me remove this one delete okay so now this is not normalized this is normalized to 50 that's why it is showing that but this I'm not going to normalize it so it is in a 70 ohm system these are the center of the Smith chart is 70 so this is a 70 ohm line right so if I take two such lines right if I take two such lines over here and I put one more port over there so I have I'm going from the input at port 1 to two outputs port 2 and port 3 so I am trying to construct a what you call is a Wilkinson divider so here in between I have to put a resistance of 100 ohm so if I go here and put a resistance of 100 ohm LUM components resistance of 100 ohm correct now now I don't have to stick to 70 but because now the termination would be 50 okay so now every port is a 50 so we in a 50 ohm system I am dividing the power to half okay 3 dB down so once I do this I am going to hit simulate okay so S22 is coming less oh because this is not 100 ohm this has to be 100 ohm okay now let's re-simulate this okay so now you will see s11 s22 and s33 okay all are 50 ohm correct and what happened to the power so let's put this aside so if i look at s21 it will be 3 db down so this is minus 3 db right and if i look at s31 it's again 3 db down okay so both the powers are 3 db down okay so what does it mean it means that I have divided the power into half so this is a Wilkinson divider I can also use this in a reverse way I can s put in power in terminal 2 and 3 and they will combine uh, at terminal 1 right so this is called Wilkinson two-way divider now one more thing I want to show is I will do it across frequency so I am going to go here and put start stop step and I am going to see a uh, region around 10 gigahertz so I'll go from 9 to 11 gigahertz so I will go from 9 gigahertz to 11 gigahertz correct in steps of let's say 10 megahertz 10 megahertz okay and I hit simulate so you'll see that across this band the power has divided into half across 9 to 11 gigahertz band and the impedance is still 50 ohm right impedance is 50 ohm right and don't worry about the phase of course you know the phase would is not it's not a concern over here both are going to be in the same phase actually if you look at phase of s21 so so let's put here the phase okay so if I was to put a phase of s21 s21 add phase and if I look at s31 phase okay so both are going to be 90 degree at 10 gigahertz right so both are 90 degree at 10 gigahertz so what does it mean it means that I have divided the power into half without disturbing the phase now if I want to do a three-way divider okay so I will go here and I will put here 86 ohms right 86 ohms okay and hit synthesize so it is going to be 205 and 5077 so 205 205 and 5077 5077 so let me just check this once more 205 and 5077 and I am going to put 3 now and this will not go to each other okay so let's put there 3 of them 1 
and let's repeat this again okay so this is done so I'm going to introduce another terminal over here which is going to be S4 okay and what I'll do is from each one of them I'll hang a resistor of 50 ohm so I'll hang a resistor of 50 ohm from each one of them so this is 50 this is 50 and over here it's 50 and they are going to a common node so this is the most problematic connection in the layout if you have two metal presses that's why Wilkinson dividers are not preferred if you have less number of layers okay so this is going to divide by 3 or 4.77 okay so let's hit simulate again so if I hit simulate okay so it's still 50 but now it is going to be near to 4.77 so I'm looking at S11, S22, S33 and S44 all are matched to 50 ohm correct not this one green one okay so all are matched to 50 ohm here close to 50 ohm and S21, S31 and S41 okay so they are on top of each other and if you see it is 4.81 it should be 4.77 so 0 0.03 dB is the loss insertion loss on each branch and all the phases are going to be 90 so 41 will also be 90 uh, what happened to 41 hmm. oh I plotted DB sorry I have to plot the phase so I put there the phase of 41 okay so they are also on top of each other right so at 10 gigahertz all of them are 90 okay so now this is Wilkinson three-way divider okay so now let's say we want to do a hybrid right so you can plot this also s11 s22 so that you have a familiar this thing also s22 s11 s22 and s33 and s44 so this is a three-way divider so they are better than 20 db everywhere right so that's basically what this graph was showing me right and the division is by 3 power is divided uh, minus 4.77 db phase is 90 degrees so this is a two-way and three-way divider let's do a hybrid so to uh, do a hybrid I need uh, 35.35 ohms right so I'll go here and I want 35.35 ohms and I will say hit synthesize so it is 1023 and 4748 so I'm going to make two of them like that so first of all I will remove that okay and these resistors I'll remove so I'm making a hybrid now okay so this is going to be 1023.6 1, sorry 1023.6 and this is going to be for 4700 uh, let me see again 4742.5 okay uh, apply okay so now I have two of these as two of these right and then I am going to have 50 ohm lines right so I'm going to need two more of this but they are going to be 50 ohm so this is going to be 603 603 and this is sorry not 500 603 okay and this is going to be 4857 okay so this is my 50 ohm line 
So I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one here. Okay. Okay. So now I have got four ports. Okay, one, two, three, and this is my fourth port. Right. So I'm going to arrange them nicely. Don't worry about this. Okay, so this is my hybrid. So I'll do F5 on this. Okay, let's see if I'm recording. Yeah. So this is my hybrid. So let's simulate this and see if it works. Okay, now you see that all the ports are still match 50. Return losses are better than 10. But now you will see here that 2, 1 and 3, 1 are three d are going to be 3 dB down, right? So if you put here a marker here. So you see, they are 3 dB down, roughly. They are going to be exactly 3 dB when you come to the center. Okay, so somewhere here at 10 gigahertz, they are 3 dB, the power divides into half. And S41 is minus 49 dB or minus 50 dB. That, that's, that's port number 4 is isolated from port number 1. And then the power divides into 2. Okay, so S21 and S31 is 3 dB down. That's what you see here. And then if you look at the, the phases, right? So S21 and S31 phase. So let me put an unwrap on this. Trace. This is S31. Unwrap. Okay. Fine. Okay. And let's put an unwrap on this one also. This is what? 4 1. So 4 1 is not required. Okay. So now, what is the gap between the two? The gap between the two should be 90 degrees, right? So let's see here at 10 gigahertz okay so at 10 gigahertz you will find s31 is 180 and s21 is 90 so the total gap between the two the total gap between the two is going to be 90 degrees so in a hybrid what comes out from 2 1 is 90 degrees 3 1 is 180 degrees so they are quadrature between each other right so you can generate a quadrature using a hybrid right and the power is divided into half and fourth port is isolated now where can this be used this can be used in designing a mixer where you want a rf allo isolation so on one side you can put a rf other side you can put a allo and there will be a very good isolation between them so hybrid 90 degree hybrid would have an application there now let's make one more okay so in this case i didn't mention what would be the impedance of the line it will be root 2 times of z0 which is 50 so it will be 70 ohm lines Okay, so let's make a what you call a hybrid that way. So in this case, there is going to be again how many ports? Four ports only, right? So okay, so now I'm going to make a 180 degree hybrid. So I need a a line which is going to be 70.07 so let's go back 70.7 70.7 right so there is 319.8 319.8 so 319.8 uh, have I done a mistake just one second let me confirm this okay so everything looks okay not a issue okay so I have this and the length of the line is 4991 4991 okay so I need two such lines okay between port 1 2 and 3 uh, so I need one more line which I'm going to put here 
just one second okay so one two three and four right so this is also going to be that line so if I put power into port 1 port 3 uh, sorry port 2 and port 4 are going to get 3 dB down and this line has to be 3 times right so if I take this one and this is lambda by 4 it has to be 3 lambda by 4 right so it will be 3 into 3 multiplied by right so this is 3 micron let's put micron outside so it will put a bracket okay so 3 this is 3 lambda by 4 right and if I put power into so I have to look into I have to look into S21 and S41 and S31 would be isolated right so if I hit simulate okay so all of them are 50 ohm right there is no problem with the return loss right and forget about the phase plot okay now I'm going to look at S21 Two one and three, so three one is basically isolated. Four one and two one are three dB down. Okay, four one and two one are three dB down, and three one is isolated. Correct. So, and these are all your impedances, so they are better than twenty uh, twenty dB return losses, right? So, so this is a one eighty degree hybrid. Now I have to just put the yeah. So just look at the phase, right? So this port basically has got lambda in this direction and lambda by 2 on this direction that's why this 3 1 is isolated so 3 and 1 port are isolated and the power divides into half on port 2 and 4 so that's what a 180 degree hybrid will do so with this I have completed the basics of passives later on if you want we can do the layouts but as the applications will arise we will do the layouts right so I'm gonna stop here thanks a lot